Good afternoon to all our viewers all around the world who is watching on Mac TV live. And this is the US Open T20 competition. And we are now into the finals. So we have had four days of lovely cricket right here in South Florida. And we are now inside of the stadium on Broward. And inside the commentary box is no other than the great Lenny Archibar alongside Ian Thomas. And we'll be bringing to you the best of cricket right here. We have had some very exciting game earlier on. You know, the Atlanta Fire had defeated the Molten Sultan, which is one of the better teams that's in the league, you know. You know, they just happen to have their bad day on the very last chance of making it to the final. You know, you had to win that one, but uh, the Atlanta Fire got the better of better of them and so they are into the finals also is the Somerset Cavaliers you know we have seen them you know very great bunch of crit cricketers you know they have been displaying very good cricket right throughout the tournament and they deserve their spot here in the finals and the finals will be a 15 over a fear so we're gonna be having a lot of cricket around here so I'll just take it over to Lenny uh, thank you, Ian Thomas. So the 28 teams enter the competition this year, um, Ian, and it comes down to the final two, Somerset Cavaliers. This is their third final in three years. They have won one, they have lost one. Now this could be a deciding one uh, to see where it goes. Atlanta Fire, we just saw them, very determined bu bunch of individuals. Their catching has been spot on. And they've taken out a big team. They've taken out Multan Sultan. So who would have thought? Uh, but we're here for the final stretch. 15 overs aside. Rusty Tehran will be the man operating from the commentary box. In, and he runs in now to both of Demi and Ebanks. And uh, Atlanta Fire having won the toss. Electing to bat. And uh, Eon probably a brave decision here from Atlanta to bat first. Considering uh, it's been a gloomy day all day. Well, all I can say is that they are a very positive team, you know. They back themselves in this. And I'm telling you, if you did not believe in the term that say catches win matches, well, today you had to. Because they took two marvelous catch to really get themselves here in the finals. So, you know, everything is going their way. So, they decided to bat. So coach Aslam Khan and 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 Brong and uh, in fact team owner Aslam Khan and and coach Brong would be quite happy with the way things have gone here for Somerset Cavaliers. They've invested a lot of resources into the unit as 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 all other owners would have done in this series. Uh, but the fruits of uh, Somerset Cavaliers rising to the top, they're in they're in their third final in three years. And Atlanta Fire, they, they've won a couple of big championships this year. They won the, the, the 2X uh, uh, tournament down in Houston in the summer. And they also won a national uh, state championship, National Cricket uh, League uh, out in Wisconsin. So they have uh, dominated two other major events. And Somerset Cavaliers have won here before. So an equal matchup, tailor the tape. And it all comes down to 15 overs aside to see who is the better team today rusty tehran has made a relatively good start couple of balls only a single on the board so the lights are on here at uh broward county stadium a beautiful facility eon and uh, a facility that's uh, that has hosted international events of uh of the highest level already several times and with the news the Indian seems to be liking this facility they have come here a few times already yes so Rusty Tehran bowling putting his back into it you know getting the ball to climb even though the pitch is not the fastest but you know been holding back based on the weather here but you realize the bowlers they're giving it them they're all and Tehran is just doing that you know very good delivery but well matched by Babwa and Ebanks is now on strike. So good going, good start. So Damien Ebanks had a good semi-final. 
Ball sliding down the leg side. Called the wide. The umpires uh, uh, for today's game are two umpires who would have recently made their one-day international debut. And, of course, Jermaine Lindo and Vijay Malela. Uh, the two on-field umpires today. Ball sliding down the leg side. And Kinar Lewis skips across. Very regulation take. Wide goes Jermaine Lindo. And the disappointment there from uh, Rusty Tehran. Not that Jermaine Lindo has made a bad call, but uh, disgusted with himself for sliding down the leg side, Ian. Yes, but well taken there by Lewis behind the wicket. You know, he's been batting amazing pretty well through the, the tournament. So he bangs. Uh, as Akil Hussein having a throw at the sums, uh, but to no avail as the Bassman's camp is through putting four on the board. Well, I love the way the Atlanta Fire is starting off here. They're running pretty good between the wicket, and at the same time, they're watching the ball, playing each ball on the merit, you know. We see Ibanks there just watching the ball nicely onto the bat, just guiding it and just taking a quick single. So the score goes up to four without loss, and we're still inside of the first over. So Shazam Babwa, he's had an amazing history here at the U.S. Cricket Open. He's been here from the start. All the way back to 2009, 2010. And he's not only showed up as a player, he's showed up as a captain, as a leader. And has really led team to championships over the years. So that's the man, Shazam Babwa. And today he leads the Atlanta Fire. He's won with the Trinidad and Tobago team. He's won with smart choice. And now he comes back in another final. So what an accomplishment here from Babwa, playing in a miss. And the ball goes through to... um. Kinar Lewis, Rusty Tehran has had a good series. A yes. man, a man who has uh, recently made his debut for the United States at the ODI level. So he joins a very small bunch of players who would have played one international for two countries. Of course, represented South Africa in his early days, and now sp uh, now plays for the U.S. national team. Oh, pulled into the onside. Will run away. Couple of bounces and he goes away for four. So Shazam Babwa, he gets onto the scorecard. Well, in fact, he's picked up five runs so far. One with that boundary in a single. It's eight without loss at the end of, a, of the first over. Yes, so we have to give it up to Babwa. You know, he's been leading from the beginning. He's leading all the way through. And the way he's playing... The way he's taking control of his innings in each and every one of the game, that just show you what a leader is. You know, he's leading from the front, and you gotta give him, give it up to him. You know, once a winner, they say always a winner, and I already see. You know, he's a winner just getting into the finals. You know, it was not an easy task getting here. You know, they take out one of the biggest team in the tournament in the semifinals to have their spot cemented here in the final and we just have to give it up to Babwa and his team the Atlanta Fire they are really playing their best cricket they did bring their A game here today and Ian Thomas if you t if you think the accomplishment by Shazam Babwa is an impressive one Najaf Shah the captain of the Somerset Cavaliers team he comes into this final and this will be his fourth final in four years so <laughs> Um, it's Najaf Shah versus Shazam Babwa for honors here. As Najaf Shah would have been part of the U.S. All-Stars team in, in 2016 in which they won. Najaf Shah was on a winning team. And then he was part of the Somerset Cavaliers team in 2017 in which Cavaliers won. And then last year he was part of the Cavaliers team inside edge onto the stumps. Damien Ebanks can't believe his luck. And Najaf Shaw strikes off the very first ball that he sends down. Inside edge onto the stumps. It's 8 for 1. Well, 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 Lenny Archibar. This is cricket at its best. You know, just listen to you as you go through the years that they've been here, the winnings and all, and just to see that these cricketers, they are actually producing in a result over the years. And today, they bring it right here in the Broward Stadium for Najad, Najad Shah. That was 
a excellent delivery to get rid of the hard hitting Ebanks, who we all know would be a valuable batsman for the Atlanta Fire. So, as you can see, they're all bringing their best game here. Babwa bringing his best game, and now Shaw bringing his best game. You know, a wicket in the first ball. What else could you ask for? Yeah, Najaf Shaw has played at the international level quite briefly. And he's still at this level. He's uh, he's an effort bowler, runs in and still gives you 100%. And he's led from the front. Sharma is the new man in. And Sharma gets a good delivery, but he does well to get a single here. But Najaf Shaw, quite, a, quite an experienced campaigner. And I've gone a couple of times around the camp of Somerset Cavaliers. He runs a very tight unit. He knows what he's doing. And he, he himself, as an individual, first of all, he's the, he, he's the captain of the team. But uh, along with the captain of the team, he is their opening bowler. So he's got to produce in two ways. He's got to lead, and he's also got to come up with the goals as a bowler. And so he's done both of that, and he's uh, uh, taking care of Damien E. Banks, one of the big stars here of uh, Atlanta Fire. And the way things are here, Somerset Cavaliers drawing an early bit of advantage with just getting E. Banks out of the picture well for our viewers as you can see we have a bunch of talented cricketers here you know the pool of cricketers that we have seen here over the past four days you know you have seen big names from all over the world that is right here in fort lauderdale on the broward stadium you know the grounds here playing their best cricket you know that goes to show what type of a competition this this is cricket at its best and we're bringing the best out of each player on the field you know on the day so good cricket here so Babwa, ball goes down the leg side, called a wide here by um, Vijay Malela. And I was making the point both Vijay Malela and Jermaine Lindo Ion uh, would have gone a level up in their umpiring career. They've, uh, they're now ODI umpires with the news that the U.S. team has been granted one international status. And I was part of that um uh, part of that series that happened here with Namibia, Papua New Guinea, and the U.S. And Jermaine Lindo and Vijay Malela would have been uh, uh, ODI newest addition to the to the umpires. So ball cut away. That's a good looking shot. Tehran will run around only a single. On a single that brings Atlanta Fire, whom, who I think has made a brave decision to bat first. They're 11 for 1. Yes, so... The umpires, we got to give it up to them throughout this season you know, or this tournament here. You know, they have made some very good calls in terms of the decision that they make. You know, And we just want to say that you know, we welcome these two umpires who are able to umpire at the highest level. You know, We can actually see that the cricket is growing here in America, not just with the cricketers, but also the umpire association. We see we are producing top umpires who could stand in a one-day international. So, you know... Good going here, you know, it's cricket from a holistic approach, it's all over. Yeah, and a big production crew on hand, the likes of Rashid, Tassin, uh, Jeremy, and we got Roddy Lalman, and so it takes a big production crew to put on a, uh, put on a presentation as this is, and that has really grown over the years. Uh, we're seeing live scores and everything else on the scoreboard finally, and fully functional these days. And so the production crew here and, and the media crew has done a lot of work, a lot of, lot of expertise, and they're all professional in their field. So 11 for 1, as Najaf Shah, look at him, he's a very tall man. And having played at the international level, he, he knows what he's doing, and uh, he, he brings to the table uh, some bit of expertise. And he leads a well-knitted bunch in Somerset Cavaliers. So we're beginning to see the drone making its rungs, uh, uh, Eon, and of course uh, we could be provided with some aerial pictures. Here we go. Yes. And the drone has come out for the final. Well taken pictures there. Beautiful sight here at the uh, central, uh, the Broward County Stadium, an international venue. Definitely, and we got to give it up to the media team. You know, ball by ball coverage. You know. 
the camera, the video, you know, we capture the ball from the bat straight to the hand of a feeler over the boundary. They've been able to follow the ball right to the very stop. You know, we watch, we see some ball that have been skied in a high and the cameraman is that good that he followed it all the way through. And now we have the drone ro roaming around the field, you know, taking some quality photos. Look at that. Beautiful. From the aerial view. Yeah, Tehran runs in again. And ball getting an outside edge. Uh, off the bat of uh, Shazam Babwa, he picks up another run. And Ian, for, for you to understand how far this tournament has come uh, technology-wise and the way uh, the production crew has really brought things up to a uh, higher level, you've got to be, uh, you, you should have been around here in the, in the early years, in the 2009, 2010. Uh, we have moved all the way from from scoring on books and just getting and just getting just one camera on the field uh, somewhere and just uh, one one bit of um, lens running the whole show. And so what you see today is really a big leap uh, from uh, from 2010 2009 to what it is today. And you'll have to appreciate some professionals who know what they're doing. And getting all those pictures live in 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 live time. Yeah, this thirteen for one here as Babwa is on seven and Sharman two, and we are in the third over. Yes, yeah, so it's pretty quiet going by the Atlanta Fire at this time. Thirteen for one, and we are already in the third over. You know, we know they know that they'll have to step it up, but in terms of the quality photo and video. That we have been able to capture i really loving it so tehran continues to bowl a very good spell that's the view of the scoreboard uh, th that's a view none of us can ever reach to to take a look at we usually watch the scoreboard from the bottom up <laughs> so, so you see we have come a long way you know and lenny being a part of it from you know as you say scoring in book to know where we are digital and you know we're bringing live hd videos and all you know looking wonderful here yeah a little glimpse of the outer pitches the matches are still playing over there so playing a miss again from uh from shazam babwa and eon you would want to think that the um yeah that's the aerial view of the whole complex a very spacey area and uh, this this venue here has hosted international events several times the cpl has come here a couple of times already with visits from the india national team new zealand has been here sri lanka has been here bangladesh has been here and of course these days used by the u.s national team as they have been granted odi status and so a wonderful complex second to none in the united states for now yes beautiful beautiful so we're back with the cricket tear on. Oh, ball them. So that's the end of Shazam Babwa. He has uh, his leg stump knocked back. And Rusty Tehran picks up his first wicket. It's 13 for two. Yes, Lenny Archibald. No, you know, I got to be thinking why they decided on batting, you know. And as we see, they're in a bit of trouble here. 13 and another wicket down. You know, this could mean serious problem in the camp of the Atlanta Fire. You know, that's Babwa being bowled all over by Tehran, who been on his A game, you know, bowling pretty good length ball and right there. And Babwa have his stump been knocked back. So a lot of work to be done by the Atlanta Fire to repair this damage. Uh, yes, Ian. So they've lost their openers to quality batsman. E Banks has gone. And Shazam Babwa is gone. And some other bad news for the Atlanta Fire squad is that Roy Silva has been ruled out of the series. And the last we heard, he's on his way to the hospital or should have gotten there. Uh, they want to check on uh, what could be maybe a broken bone or even a fracture. So um, if we get a little bit more word on what, what has happened to Roy Silva, we will certainly pass it on. But the fact is, he's out of the series. He's out of this game. And so Atlanta Fire... Has been dealt a big blow there as Ricardo Powell comes to the middle at 13 for two. Yes, Ricardo Powell is now in the middle and he's 
part of the reason why the Atlanta Fire is here in the final. He did get a wealthy 43, and in the last over, he had three huge sixes that get them over the 100 mark. So, you know, he is one of them to look out for. Former player for the West Indies, you know, we know him. He's no little rabbit when it comes with the bat. He will hit you outside of the park, and he had displayed that in the semifinals, and now we have him right at the wicket again. So Ricardo Powell asked to play another big hand here. Oh, that's a beauty of a ball. It pitched and left Ricardo Powell just uh, w squaring him up, but beating the outside edge. Too good uh, to find the edge, and it goes through to the wicket keeper. What a ball. Yes, Lenny Archibald. Um, very good ball there by Teron, running up, and he pitched the ball, just leave Ricardo Powell as he lined up that forward defensive oh. stroke but you know i just like the sportsmanship here between the batsman and the bowler you know they're still having a good time even though they're playing against each other but this is a game of cricket it's it's a disciplined game and it's a game of fun you know and just looking at that sportsmanship even he beat ricardo all over the place he was able to go down and touch him and say hey good ball man yeah this is this has been a, a, a certainly a different approach here from the somerset cavaliers team we saw in the early game they've used Akil Hussein, they've used Ashar Zaidi, and they've used the other spinners to start. But this is the first game we have seen, at least in the stadium, in which they have gone for Najaf Shaw pace and they've gone for Rusty Tehran pace. So the approach and certainly the plan has been a different one here coming into the final. And so they come back for a couple of runs. The last time there was a final, it was played between Somerset Cavaliers and California Beers. A game in which uh, Somerset Cavalier Cavaliers lost by three runs. Well, this year I can definitely say that the Somerset Cavaliers, they have a game plan in each and every game that we have seen. That they take the field, they go out there, they really execute. And you can realize that, you know, they are working off a plan. You know, they're working as a unit and... That have give them the result that they have so far, and we definitely know that for this final they would have already worked out each and every. Oh, man. it's in the air. Has he timed it well enough? Fielder is coming around. Will not get to it, and so a brave looking shot here from uh, from Sharma uh, fetches him a couple of runs. But ball was in the air for some time. A nervous moment there, I think, for the batsman, and certainly the Atlanta Fire team, Zion. Yes, uh, so back to the cavaliers and their plan so you know for them to be starting with their pace bowlers you know definitely i know they have, would have you know gone back to the drawing board and look at the team that they're up against and they would have decided how they would want to use their bowlers and i'm telling you they have a lot of bowlers in their lineup and a lot of spinners you know but they decided to start with their quickie so and so far it's been very Good results, 17 for two, three so points. 15 over the box. Yeah, a little wave to the uh, to the drone as he certainly uh, gets a, a view of the of the com box here. Hello, drone. How are you? And so 17 for two here. Uh, Ian as uh, Ricardo Powell and uh, Sharma tries to rebuild here for the Atlanta Fires. So this is a 15 over a, a side game. Yes. So it's gonna take. A little work by these two batsmen you know, to actually put the Atlanta fire in a position where they'll be comfortable. You know, they lost those two early wickets, which mean a little setback. But as you say, it's 15 overs. It's still a long way to go. So let's see what these two batsmen have to offer to the table for the Atlanta fire. So no ball is the call. And so this will be followed up by a free hit. See if he can pick up what has happened there. It might be a... Uh a foot fault, no ball. Now it's a good time for the drone to, to give us a good view as to here in a job show. Well, in fact, that's uh, <laughs> that's outside of the outside of the stadium. That's on the uh, Astro turf. 19 for two here. Yeah, we have the, the youth that's playing on the outside also. So, you know, we have the adults on this side, the T20 US Open, but then we also have the youths on the outfield. You know, it's always important that we promote youth cricket because, you know, 
we want the cricket to grow here in America and the way to grow it is to start with the youths. So a good comeback from a free hit ball from Najaf Shah. And so no harm done. It's surprise to see Ricardo Powell having a free hit ball pass without even a bat on the ball, you know. That show you the type of pressure that's been put on on the Atlanta Fire by the Cavaliers. So the Cavaliers team, in addition to uh, to Rusty Tehran and Najaf Shah, we we still are yet to see Nevin Short. Uh, we um, they're stacked up with some very good, uh, in fact, three leg spinner in Akil Hussein, Ashar Ashar Zaidi, and not forgetting Chandra Paul Hemra. So three leg spinner, Nevin Short, and we've seen two fast bowler operating here. So that's a that's a very strong bowl in depth. Uh, ball going down the leg side. Keenar Lewis has done well to uh, to save wide. Wide is the call from umpire Vijay Malela as the ball goes sliding down the leg side. Yes, we have to give it up to Keenar Lewis. You know, he has done amazingly well behind the wicket in terms of taking those wide balls. You know, he's been shattered by the batsman, but yet still he's able to make enough ground across to gather these balls and saving the extras, you know. And he also comfort with the bat in the batting he displayed in a real skills in terms of picking the right ball to hit and his timing. So good going by Knorr Lewis. Oh look at that ball ball coming back to the right hand all the way from the off stump many times you know fast bowler left hand fast bowler tends to get the the ball to move across the right hander and you look at that delivery when it comes back on the replay that's a ball that pitches and comes back into the right hander look at that mm. yeah that one cut straight through ricardo power right there that was a beauty of a delivery and earlier you were just talking about that bowling lineup that they have, the depth that they have in terms of you know, their bowling department. And it's very good when a team can come in this balance that they have such a bowling attack you know, that you could go to anyone. Because at any point, a batsman may just take liking to a bowler and you just got to remove him. But when you remove him, you better find somebody who is able to deliver. You know? And that's the good thing about this Somerset Cavalier team, they have depth both in their batting and their bowling, and I really love this Cavalier team. Uh, yes, Ian, you're right on that. Let's uh, let's talk about the batting uh, for a second day. We still haven't seen uh, the likes of Sean Finley in the stadium. We haven't seen Sean Finley bat yet. We haven't seen, well, Gajanan Singh is on the bench, and when you look at the bench strength, how do you, uh, Gajanan Singh is not playing on a, uh, on a Somerset Cavaliers team. It just goes to show the strength. And then we we haven't seen Ashar Zaidi. He's a top all-rounder on the English county scene. And we haven't seen, seen him bat yet for Cavaliers in the stadium. So it just goes to show the strength of this Cavaliers team. And they're into another final three years running. And now they're facing Atlanta Fires. Definitely. When I um, came here early and I look at their lineup, you know, and I saw that in the beginning, Sean Finley, he wasn't on that list for the 11, the final 11. And I'm like, wow, this team must be big. Then I looked through the team and it's just name after name after name that, you know, they are capable of giving you even 100 at any given point. So it's a very big team that they have put together here with the Cavaliers, you know, the depth. It's deep in their batting and in their bowling. And I just know that this is a team that is going to be around for a very long time. So Akil Hussein's been for the first time. He starts well with a dot and he coming into Bolta Sharma. So a couple of wickets... Uh, a fallen here. That's a good looking shot. Brave looking shot here from Sharma. They'll pick up a couple of runs at least. Marshall is giving chase. And that's a good looking shot from Ranak Sharma. Picks up a couple of runs. Yes. Sharma decided that he have to have a go at it. You know, he went inside out over the covers and he was able to get two runs. And in a 22 for two, 4.2 overs. 
I know Ricardo Powell is still yet to score. If you're wondering, it's Ricardo Powell who uh, play for the West Indies, you know, so he's here in this T20 version who played for the Atlanta Fires. And earlier in the game, in the semifinals, he did come up with some valuable runs, 43, with some huge sixes. Yeah, in addition to uh, being a player in this game, uh, Ricardo Powell is a U.S. national selector these days, as this ball has eluded uh, Keenar Lewis. We'll have to wait if there's a signal from the umpire. And in fact, a couple of wides will be added to the scorecard. So two more runs here for the Atlanta Fire. And they go up to 24, ball sliding down the left side. Take a look. Yeah, Keenar Lewis just getting a foot onto the ball. And so a couple of bonus runs there for the Atlanta Fire. Ion, you thought they made a brave decision to bat first, considering uh, weather interruptions and uh, that the in the offing? Uh, winning the task here, you know, I think if I was a part of a team, I would want to actually bat loss in terms of the weather. Well, the fact is they, they may have had a had a big, a big um, sense of what has happened in the semifinal. They took their chances. They batted first. In fact, they were sent in. Uh, no choice of a toss. So they were sent in by Multan Sultan. And many times, if something has worked, why not go ahead with it again? I think that's w exactly what they did, you know. They came in on that high, you know. They were feeling pretty well. They take some great catches, and they basically backing themselves to do that. So let's see, but at this point for 25 for two, you know, I think they're still in a little bother. So Akil Hussein, he's a, he's a player that comes out of Trinidad and Tobago. He plays there at the first class level and with some bit of uh, CPL experience this year. He's a quality spinner and he joins uh, three other, in fact, two other leg spinners. Left arm orthodox spinner in uh, Ashar Zaidi and Chandra Paul Hemraj on the Somerset Cavaliers team. Oh, a lofted shot, deliberately lofted. And Navin Stewart gets onto the ball. Only a single ball holding up in the, um, in the outfield. But the intent is quite clear here from Sharma. He picks up a single, 26 for two. Yes, so Sharma seems like he is the one who is going to be going at the ball, you know allowing Ricardo Powell to look at it because we know Ricardo Powell, he could change his game at any minute. So, as it is, Sharma, he's not getting the full blade of the bat on the ball. You know, we realize some is coming off the outer part of the bat, so he's still having a little problem finding the boundary, but we already see his intention. Oh. So, a bit of inside edge, and uh, on another day, he would have uh, crashed into the stumps. So, <laughs> today is gone. Uh, in the region of Kinar Lewis, and so at the end of five is 26 for two. Eon, thank you very much. We'll t uh, uh, take a quick um, break here and bring in uh, Bilal Aslam, who's been with us for the last, uh, uh, for yesterday and a part of today. So welcome, Bilal Aslam, as the score is 22, 26 for two at the end of uh, five overs here. Thank you, Eon, and thank you, Lenny. So we're into the finals now. Final game, 26 for two after five overs. And we definitely know it's going to be a daunting task for it. Atlanta Fire for the rest of the inning. They have to put on a show in order to get a respectable total. We know what happened during semifinal one, the first semifinal game, Lenny Ware. Houston Stars struggled big time and their total was chased down in no time. So here we go. Ricardo Powell. Sharma. Let's see. Sharma. See the backward square leg. It's diving stop. And throws back in. Stewart is in action. He bowled very well um, during the first semifinal. And we're looking forward for him to repeat the same performance in terms of bowling. 
So Lenny, what do you think? Uh, you know, what will be a respectable total here now um, since it's been struggled all along for the first five hours? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure they want to target 100 and, uh, 140, 150 is a, is a good score, but uh, would, would, would bring some relief to your bowling just in case a couple of overs uh, get out of hand. So uh, 140, 150 is still a good score, but um, you look at the... Uh, you look at the the go the the current run rate is just over five, so um, that might be a little bit ambitious at this point, having lost two of their top b uh, batsmen, and the fact is Roy Silva, uh, who will take no further part in the series, and uh, so it could be a little bit of setback here for the Atlanta Fire. Uh, yeah, so we do see that uh, it could be a setback, and we also see how they're going about their run scoring they realize it's a 15 over game versus a 10 over game uh, that they played earlier for a semi-final um, so they're going about it uh, they lost two of their wickets they still have time long time to go for this inning um, and we'll see how Atlanta Fire is able to score some boundaries because that's what they need so a top edge uh, has eluded Kinar Lewis running up towards the fine leg boundary. Akil Hussein gets there first. Oh, he sends a very good throw back to Ashar Zaidi. Uh, but in the end, a couple of runs here for Ricardo Powell. Ricardo Powell, uh, he's a quick runner. He realized he was going to struggle. And here comes a replay, as you can see, a top edge. The ball came out quickly behind the wicket keeper. He ran back. And then he got help, and it was a quick throw. Had it been a direct throw, I mean, we probably would have seen Legampar in play here. But uh, at the end, he made it safely. Comes. Oh, big shot here from Ricardo Powell. He is teed off, uh, and it's that. into the grassy banks. I cleared it uh, big time. Uh, Ricardo, we know what he can do. Stewart bangs in short. A lot of time for Ricardo Powell to think about it and then put it away over the deep mid-wicket boundary. Yeah, yeah look at that. Play. Asking to be hit. Ricardo Powell is in top form here. Yeah. And this one is easy food. Easy food for Ricardo Powell. He goes up to nine. It's 37 for two. Yeah. Stewart realized that uh, it was banged in short and asking to be hit. And it disappeared. So six valuable runs that will gain a lot of confidence um, for Ricardo Powell. Yeah, we see uh, we see a lost ball situation here. So yeah. the budget of uh, the budget of U.S. Cricket Open will go up by a ball. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely will if they're not able to find a ball. So we see those um, flags as they went behind it, and I believe they were able to recover the ball. So some savings. Yeah, we see the. Uh, could be the third umpire as is customary to walk out with a box of ball and the umpires will have to make sure that ball resembles a 5.5 .5 ball in terms of usage yes very close to a new ball you'd say um you say bilal or maybe a one that is roughed up a little bit uh, definitely roughed up a little bit um because uh you know they want to make sure that there's a balanced um advantage i mean it's an advantage for both teams or we we want to make sure that um it's not a brand new ball because you don't have openers batting and then you don't have the attack bowler bowling it's the, the ball area. sliding down the leg side so navin short has uh, somehow lost the plot here 12 in the over so far yes. now ricardo powell uh, playing a good hand again here i'm pretty sure when ricardo came to this tournament as as talented as he is, he he might have been uh, he might have been allowing the other the other players to get ahead, but uh, there's always there's always the the call back for the veteran to come out and and play and in ins, and yep. that time has come here today. And then he, so in this case, you can see he has built a brand of him, his own, Ricardo Powell. That is uh, because he's been in the middle. For the past what two hours or so, and then uh, also scoring some runs. So um, bowler in his mind, he wants to be careful. Doesn't want to bang in short. Um, so because Ricardo, he's got the power, 
and he can clear the boundary easily. So Akil Hussein will continue his first of all, went for six. So Jermaine Lindo, along with Akil Hussein in the picture there, and so number 34, uh, Sharma, the batsman. Now we get a full frame of the pitch. Kinar Lewis, Ricardo Powell on strike. Yeah, Akil Hussein now bowling to Ricardo Powell. First one in on the back for it, punches it through to short covers. And it brings us one more run. 40 for two after 6.1. Um, so they're regrouping at this time, Lenny. Yeah, Atlanta Fire have done well to take out one of the favorites of the tournament, Multan Sultan. And uh, we were making the point of Mike Bilal. The, a bad game will come, upset will happen. The lower order will be tested. We saw, we saw exactly what happened today when Mohamed Elias... Ali Khan had to come out and try to win a game for Multan Sultan when the likes of Rizwan Chima, Zishan Ashraf, uh, Jaskaran Malhotra failed to come up with the, with the required run. Yeah, we saw that that was a calculated, uh, they, they did not take calculated risk, uh, the, the top five. Um, they should have taken responsibility. Uh, it's a very good ball outside the off stump. Carter Powell didn't read it well, went straight to the wicket keeper. So speaking of Multan Sultan, they hurt themselves big time with the fielding error. So here we go, the replay. Again, Akiru San going outside the off stump, uh, shaping away from Ricardo. It's over again. Oh, so look at that. Insane. Look at that. High into the year. So it and it's got enough distance. And it's gone for six. And even while the ball is out of the playing area, Rusty Tehran <laughs> wanted to make that into a catch. <laughs> Outside of the boundary, it wouldn't have counted. So there we go, Akira San. This time around, Ricardo Powell waiting for the ball and launched it over deep long on. And it went long way. There we go. So ball disappearing into the stands. Another yeah, side. that's a big hit there from Ricardo Powell. He seems to be having a good day. This one is uh, punched in uh, to the offside and has gone over the head of Navin Stewart. Consecutive sixes off the bat of Ricardo Powell. And it brings up the 50 here for the Atlanta Fire. Akiro San under pressure. He comes and then this time again, the power of Powell. Polemic coming into play here. Another six back-to-back -back sixes by Ricardo Powell. Akil. So Akil Hussein, oh, what clever play here from Ricardo Powell, realizing 14 has come off that over, 12 of them in consecutive balls, and he realized why take another risk, and so he's going to save that maybe for another time, 53 for 2. Yeah, current run rate uh, improved all the way to um, uh, almost 7.6, um, so that's looking good for Atlanta Fire, we know the type of uh, fire they can bring in terms of bowling and fielding. So uh, if they can get to that respectable total around 140, 150, uh, it won't be easy task for Cavaliers. They'll be facing a different team here, uh, especially what they bring to the table when it comes to extra efforts in the field, like they did against Multan Sultan. Catches win matches we saw there, and they were you know, absolutely stunning catches um, by Atlanta Fire. Outstanding fielding. And then uh, we saw Multan Sultan, some missed fielding, especially in the last over. Uh, we recall on the second ball, Ricardo Powell ran in, and it was a missed field, and he scored two runs and ultimately three sixes. So Chandra Paul Hemraj, the other leg spinner, similar bowling type to Akil Hussein Bilal, comes into the attack. And the big man, Ricardo Powell, who has uh, had uh, a couple of good games we know he had a previous semi-final, a good game, and so far with 23 on the board, you've got to consider he's he's among the runs again. Yeah, he's already brought them back into the game. Uh, we know that they were struggling with the run rate of four, and now it's 7.5. And this time he misses outside the off stump. Uh, good line of length by Chandra Paul. He knows what Ricardo can do, staying away from his bat. Yeah, so... Uh, Chandra Paul Hemraj, and I was uh, earlier today. I was just trying to um, 
I was just trying to go on the internet and just uh, uh, type in the name Chandra Paul Hemra just to pick up a couple of a couple of tidbits on the on the man and uh, funny funny I picked up on the I picked up a question asked on the internet is uh, is Chandra Paul Hemraj the son of Shiv Chandra Paul <laughs> and somebody replied and said yes he's, he's his eldest son well I'll dispute that and tell you that uh, Shiv Chandra Paul has no relation to Chandra Paul Hemraj although they live just about uh, I would say two miles away from the same area good looking shot again from from uh, it appears to be Sharma and it's 59 for two. Ronald Sharma coming into uh, action here. A straight drive. Uh, it was a great shot and uh, another boundary for Atlanta Fire. That's what they need at this point. This um, stage now, so we're into over number eight. Here he comes again. And he plays towards backward point, being cut off and two <coughs> ones by Bassman. 61, Ronald Sharma, which is 21, and he's playing his role very well. So Chandrapal, uh, like you corrected, Lenny, uh, is not the son of uh, Shivarine Chandrapal, the great West Indian batsman with unorthodox style, batting style, that is, almost facing bowler um, head-on. Um, but he's no relationship, like you clarified. And now Ricardo Powell looking to change his gloves. So he's walking back now. So um, I think after eight overs, 62 for two. Current run rate 7.8. So it's going well for Atlanta Fire. Cavaliers, uh, they know the wickets will come because they'll have to take their chances going into uh, the last stage of this game, the last five overs. They'll have to swing bad, so which means some chances will come their way. So Stewart comes back. He was uh, gave 13 runs at first over, and this will be his second over now. And Ronald Sharma will be facing Stewart. He's trying to set his field. Uh, we do see that a strange uh, field. So we got whitish long on, uh, deep mid wicket, backward square leg, and you also have a fine leg. Short third man, point, cover, and a sweeper. So here comes Stewart. Oh, he bowled him. So inside edge, Ronald Sharma is gone, trying to play outside the off stump, inside edge, onto the stumps. So one more wicket goes down for Atlanta Fire. Time for Cavaliers to make a comeback. Lenny, as you can look at the, the replay, Stewart brings the ball in a little bit, inside edge. Didn't keep his eye on the ball until the last moment and a little send off by Stewart, as we see. Um, so, third wicket goes down for Atlanta Fire. Yeah, it appears Navin Stewart has the golden arm. <laughs> and he comes back and gets the unimportant wicket in Sharma. I remember last year, in last year, final uh, uh, Somerset Cavalier, they were, cruise, they were cruising along. And the ball was thrown to Navin Stewart. And the rest is history. And so he seems to have a, go a golden arm this year again so far. We'll have to wait and see how how things unfold here. As uh, number three has come to the middle to join uh, Ricardo Powell. Saiba Batu Singh. And uh, so 62 for three on your screen. Yeah, Batu Singh um, will come in and... He will have no time to wait. He still has to motor this along and let Ricardo Powell be the, the run scorer and then support him until he gets in. So Batu Singh is ready to face Stewart. So 
A little smack over to short mid wicket area and we're a single and there we go passionate Stewart runs after the ball to make sure that they don't run set take a second run here Batu Singh is off strike and that's what um, he should be doing Ricardo will face Stewart now yeah Nathan Stewart is a competitor He's a very, very good uh, uh, medium pacer. He gets wicket at, uh, at very important in the intervals. And he's uh, he's a good batsman too, Navin Stewart. Oh, Ricardo Powell, all the ease in the world. Zaidi has come up with a good catch. And yeah. just uh, maybe a feet or two of the long on boundary, Ashar Zaidi. Safe pair of hands. Navin Stewart has picked up a couple of wickets. And the big one, Ricardo Powell, goes for 24. 63 for four. Yeah, big loss for Atlanta Fire. Well settled. Ricardo Powell trying to power one more out of the park, but did not have the distance, had the elevation, and a well judged catch by. Ashur Zadi catches when matches. Yeah, the catching from the Atlanta Fires have been spot on today. We haven't seen a spill in the field. And Ricardo Powell just needed uh, perhaps a couple of feet there, uh, Bilal Isla Aslam, for it to carry. Yes, Lenny uh, uh, just needed that. Probably you know got the bottom of the bat. It was his power that took it all the way closer to the boundary. If it would have been an ordinary person like you or me, it would have just <laughs> been inside the circle. But a uh, well judged catch. So Zayn Saeed has come out to the middle. He, 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 he took a spectacular catch in the semi final. Zayn, uh, so Batu Singh. Two new batsmen in, Zan Sayed and Batu Singh. Um, in the middle out there, it, so they just have to regroup. That's four wickets down for Atlanta Fire. And they need to make sure that they get the respectable total. No matter how great your bowling is, you need runs to defend. And here we go. So Sayed was facing that the first delivery and he scores a single Batu Singh now comes a strike he will retain the strike now so 64 for 4 8.4 after 8.4 overs Stewart who after sending Powell back so another swing and a miss and this time Batu Singh wanted to um, have a cover drive and just did not reach the ball you can see ball shaping Wait, so the pace, he reduced some pace on this one, Stewart, that is. And Batu Singh just missed it completely. So Navin Stewart with a couple of wickets in this over. Let's see Stewart again uh, attacking the stumps and played towards backwards square leg for a single. So Sayed gets off strike and Batu Singh will be facing next over now Stewart two for 16 uh, um, in his two overs yeah I remember now uh, Navin short uh, I did a tournament in New York uh, this past summer uh, the Bangladesh Premier League up in up in New York and uh, uh, Navin Stewart played in that tournament he did well and uh, I got a text from him and telling me that um, he wants to have a footage of, uh, of his performance in that series and while that series was televised, I couldn't be able, I wasn't able to to find the um, the appro appropriate footage uh, on that series. But the point I'm trying to make is that he takes his local cricket and uh, franchise cricket very serious. And you know, these days, uh, Bilal, these uh, these players who appear on streaming all across the world, uh, they want to look back and see what they have done. It's a quick single. By Batu Singh here. So Chandrapal, um, so Chandrapal is back in bowling. So w none for nine is in his first over. 
and they'll have to find a bowler Atlanta Fire to go after and we'll see who do they find but two new batsmen in it won't be easy at all Jinder Paul back in action again Right so on. we've got uh, 34 balls remaining. Chandrapal Hemraj, he is bowled at the CPL level to great effect for Guyana. So that experience is handy here. This time around, plays back and uh, nice fielding off of his own bowling. Chandrapal. Save yeah, I remember. I remember this this season. Uh, the Guyana Amazon Warriors were playing Barbados Tridents, and out come Alex Hales. And the very first ball of the match, uh, Chandra Paul Hemraj went through the a ball that kept a little bit low. And the big English T20 player Alex Hales was walking back to the hut. Scorecard reading a bold first ball of the bowling of Chandra Paul Hemraj. And, and I'm pretty sure um, Bilal, when he will reflect back on his uh, franchise bowling, I'm pretty sure he will remember that day Alex Hales is no mean a pushover batsman. Oh, yes. Probably one of the best in the world. He can destroy you in <laughs> no time. Agree. <coughs> oh, a big shot here by Batu Singh. Will only fetch him a single. Yeah, just a single run there. So Batu Singh um, gets our strike here. And we have one more ball to go. Chandra Paul, so far, so good. He's having a good time out there, and this will be his last delivery. If he can survive this, and it seems like uh, he will. No run on the last ball. So that will be end of the 10th over. 68 for 4, Atlanta Fire. Um, they just have to score some boundaries for the rest of the inning now. Got plenty of uh, wickets in hand. Well, let's see how they go about the last five overs and put a respectable total for Cavaliers to chase. Pretty interesting game going on here. It's final of this US T20 where we have the Atlanta Fire, who is batting, currently 68 for four. And the Cavaliers bowling, and they seem to be doing a pretty good job in containing the Atlanta Fire at 68 for four. And we're playing a 15 over affair, and it's now 10.1 over. So Naveen Stewart doing a good job with the ball there. Uh, yes, Ian. Uh, it appears that um, by now, if uh, if you've got if you've got Navin Stewart on your side and things are not happening, you throw him the ball and and things will start to happen. We saw a double strike in the last over. Yes, he got the wicket there of Ricardo Powell, who was going great guns. We saw what he was able to do in the semifinals. He actually brought them into the finals, and he got that wicket there. With Ricardo Powell trying to go at him, you know, was just a little bit shy of the boundary. And here so it is again. That's the man with the magic, you know. Naveen, another wicket to him. And the Atlanta Fire is in a bit of trouble here. Another wicket down, just at 70. And it's 10.2 overs. What a way to bowl. Naveen Stewart is doing an excellent job. You say that's the man with the magic, the magic fingers. Just give him the ball and he'll bring you some wickets. Yeah, ball flicked into the onside in the air for a long time. And the fielder came in, had to run a long way. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, he held on. Might have been a ways Zia. We'll confirm that. But uh, fact is another wicket goes down here for the Atlanta Fire. They're batting a 70 for 5. And Navin Stewart has picked up another one. He's bowling a three for 18 at the moment. Yes, Lenny Archibar. This is where you need to have your A game on. And this is a point where Atlanta Fire need to bring the fire here. You know, it's only 4.3 overs remaining. We 
actually have over four days basically to assess what it is in terms of the T10 and the T15 where you should be positioned at least at the end of 10 overs and normally you want to be within at least a hundred and here we realize they're 30 runs shy of 100 with only 4.2 overs to go I think they're in a bit of trouble and we all know the Cavaliers their batting and the depth of their batting but I can tell you their bowling is nothing less it's a very good team that they have here and they're really putting on the pressure on the Atlanta fire tightening the screws so they're going at uh, just over six and a half runs and over and Dwayne Stevens comes out to the middle and along with Zane Saeed and the lower order here we'll have to wait and see what they post but uh, uh, Cavaliers running a very good game again Navy and Stewart three for 19 so far and Navy and Stewart having uh, uh, it seems like he's picked up from last year's final for the California Bears and he's turned in a very good bowling performance so far. Here he is. And we'll come into bowl to the new man, Stevens. Oh, that's a good looking shot from Antoine Stevens. One bounce over extra cover. And it goes away for four. That's a beauty of a shot from Stevens. And a well executed over the cover boundary. Uh, and it's four runs to him in a well-deserved four, in a well-needed four for Atlanta Fire, who needs that run scorecard to be ticking. They're 75 for five, you know, 10.5 overs. You know, they need to get this going. And what a way to go. What a way to start his innings. Four runs, one ball, and pretty good hit. Yeah, good start here from Steven. Look at that. Commanding shot. Played through the line of the delivery. Ball going down the leg side. And ball helped along the way. Najaf Shah is in the way. So that's the completion of over number 11, Ian? Yes. Um, at the completion of 11 over, the Atlanta Fire, 76 for 5. You know, I don't think this is where they want to be at 11 over. They would rather be at least 100 in. But it is what it is. It's a game of cricket full of uncertainty. And they are 76 for 5. That's runs on the board. They still have wicket in hand. They still have 4 overs to go. So they could put up a very challenging score here. Because we realize anything from 120 could mean a little difficulty getting. But we know that the Cavaliers, they have a very good team. So, you know, it's going to be an interesting final here this afternoon. And I just want to give it up to the players. You know, they have come here and they have done their best. They have showcased the best of their talent so good going and just want to thank you fans out there for watching on mac tv live for all the facebook fans we thank you guys who are watching and sharing at the same time you know it's a wonderful weekend and it's a weekend of cricket and we are right here in broward at the broad stadium bringing you lovely cricket So it's 76 for 5 and 11th over. So Hemraj continues. Two overs, no made none for 11 coming into this over. And Twain Stevens and uh, Zane Saeed out in the middle. 23 balls remaining. This is a 15 over encounter. Atlanta fire. Uh, takes on Somerset Cavaliers in the final of the U.S. Cricket Open 2019 series. Yes, a lot is, is expected from these two batsmen here. So this is the first time Atlanta Fire has come into a U.S. Open final. On the other hand, this is a final number three for Somerset Cavaliers. So big difference in in the appearance in the appearance of uh, the two teams uh, uh eon somerset cavaliers have been here before they've played on the big stage and the atlanta fire would have taken out Sul uh, uh multan sultan a big team in this tournament 80 for five is the score yes that was the upset of the upset you know 
when they actually take out the Molten Sultan, which was a very good team, display great cricket all the way through, but they had their one bad game, and that was the semi-finals. So that's the reason why they're not here, you know. They just choose to have their bad game at the wrong time. And the Atlanta Fire, you know, we have to give it up to them, you know. They play their way into the finals here, and they're still giving a very good show, you know, four runs all the way, you know, very good shot there by Stevens. He seems to be doing pretty well. He's finding the boundary. That's his second boundary of his innings. So it's nine run from four ball. Great going. And good looking shot there from the batsman. Yeah, that's a good looking shot. He finds the gap, a couple of boundaries for him. So the Atlanta Fire will have to do without the service of Roy Silva. Who suffered a hand injury off the bowling of Ali Khan. And Ali Khan is by no mean a slow bowler. Yeah, Ali Khan was coming in with some steam at the point where he hit him. And, you know, that would be a big loss for Atlanta Fire. Because definitely they would have need to have him here in this batting lineup. Especially going up against the Somerset Cavaliers who have such a very good bowling attack. And this one is hit high up in the air. And it's going to be a catch down there on the long off boundary. So another wicket down for the Atlanta Fire. They're now 85 for 6. And the Cavaliers are doing extremely well. They're on top of their game right here. So I was saying that was a loss, you know. A hit on the hand and they had to take him off. So he's off to get that hand checked. And we'll give you further update on the player. But at this moment, we are in the finals. It's Atlanta Fire versus the Somerset Cavaliers. And Atlanta Fire is 85 for 6. That's in the 12th over. So three overs to go, 85 for 6. Lenny Archibald, what type of total would you be looking for from here on? Well, uh, Atlanta Fire doesn't have uh, too many choices here. 18 balls remaining. And we're down to the lower order. But I'll tell you something. Uh, 85 for 6 with 18 balls remaining may not be enough for the likes of uh, Kenar Lewis. Maxud. So here, Maxud, we saw what he can do. Uh, Xavier Marshall is up there. Away is Zia. Ashar Zaidi. Sean Finley, it's not uh, 85 for 6, may not uh, be enough to control those names that I've just mentioned here. Yes, the Atlanta Fire, they need definitely some more runs on the board. So they still have 18 deliveries to go. I would say they would need at least two runs per ball to get them in a comfortable position where they could actually have something to bowl at. Yeah, Eon, but on the other hand, uh, we've always heard the we've always heard the, the phrase runs on the board or runs on the board. So regardless of what has happened here, the only sure thing we know, we know eighty six runs are on the board and that's you can take that to the bank any day. That is so true, because this Atlanta fire team here, one thing I know, they do have some good feelers. You know, we could see in the semifinals, they take some great catch, and they say catches win matches. So we're going to see, you know, in the outfield, they're very cr fast across the field. You know, they have safe hands, so it's going to be a game on. So as you say, runs on the board is runs on the board, and that's always a fact. So they are 86 for 6. Who to tell what will happen in the next round in terms of when the Cavaliers is batting, you know. It just take a few wickets to put you under pressure and it's how well you hold out to that pressure. And that's a swing and a mix by Stevens, but he's trying to get on with this game, you know. He knows that the boundaries will be valuable at this point of the game and he's not holding back. He's going through with his shots, so... So, Kanda Swami playing a miss in fact Stevens is the man who's right Kanda Swami is at the other end
another swing and a miss here by Stevens. You know, the ball is keeping a little low, even though Tehran is a tall man, but the ball is keeping a bit low. We all know that the wicket, you know, it's been used for all four days. First day, not much play, you know, what else? a lot of water. So the moisture is under there. We realize the seam bowlers did not get much out of the wicket. You know, it's all about using your head and a little tactic here and there. But Tehran, he's on top of his game and he's bowling pretty well. So the Atlanta Fire, 86 for 6 in the 13th over. Yeah, Tehran has had a good spell so far. 1 for 10. Yes, Tehran is he's bowling extremely well. You know, he's using the variation in terms of the pace, in terms of his length. You know, he is really using his skill and his experience when he comes out to bowl and he has been doing this all day so the innings finally winding down here ball by ball yes so i'm back to terran again so as a bowler you find a weakness in a batsman then you're gonna keep feeding him that ball and all five balls from his this over is basically the same length and is the same thing, same result. Stefan being a swing and a miss, you know, a little short of a length, and he's unable to make connection, which means no runs. So a single there to Stevens will close out over number 13, 87 for six. And so with 12 balls remaining, we'll have to wait and see where. Uh, Atlanta Fire ends up, but um, certainly, um, certainly, Eon. Th these are these are numbers that Somerset Cavaliers will will like. They're just going over six and a half runs, six point seven to be exact. So, uh, relative to that, I'm pretty sure that uh, they'll be quite happy with the way things are at the moment. Definitely, the Somerset Cavaliers would be pleased at this point of the game with only two more overs remaining and the Atlanta Fire is at 87 for 6 doesn't seem like they have any more fire in them you know there's no boundary coming and even if we should have a few boundaries they will just get shy in a hundred and a hundred runs for this Cavalier team I think that is something that they will be comfortable with and as we've seen over the few days that the Cavaliers they really have a game plan you know and they have st stuck stood tight on it you know they, they, they haven't strayed away they basically come out with a plan and they are executing the plan all the way and that's what brought them here in the final you know they've been able to execute and you know with a hundred runs I believe they they have the batting and the depth to do it it's up to the atlanta fire in terms of their bowling and their feeling they really have to bring their a plus game so akil hussein comes back uh, into the attack with 11 balls remaining One of Kenar Lewis is getting a little tired behind the wicket, you know. He have missed at least few ball. I saw him miss one um stumping, you know, and now in a little misfield Bassman was able to scramble through for a second run. You know, it could be tiring, you know, he's been keeping all day, you know. He's been behind that wicket all day and he's also out there with the bat. He's been batting really well. So, you know, he's put it on a very good show here. One Kenar Lewis, you know, I know keeping is always a difficult job to be bending all day, then you're back with batting. Yeah, for viewers out there, you might be wondering what's the weather situation here. I'll, I can tell you, it's quite cleared up here. Najaf Shaw trying to get hold of a catch. And the batsman come back, come, comes back for a couple of runs. So here we go. So definitely Stefan is going to have a swing at it and he just he keeps swinging you know and he connects thick out the half of the bat he managed to get two runs 91 for 6 and he'll swing again down to long off and he'll get another single so the score will be 92 for 6 
with just 1.2 overs to go. I really think the Cavaliers, you know, they did well in terms of the way they have bowled in this innings here. They have batted well, they have bowled well, and they fielded well. And they really deserve their spot here in the finals. And I also have to give it up to the Atlanta Fire, you know, who played a tactical game in the semifinals to overturn the Molten Sultan, who we know was a very, very good team. So Akil Hussein continues, and uh, the weather situation here, no threat of rain, I can tell you that. So the, the lights are on, but uh, Eon is certainly has gotten better considering it's, uh, it's going into the afternoon here, but um, I can't see any threat of rain, so we could see a complete uninterrupted final from here on. And now the organizers might be wondering, well, we should have gone for 20, but the way things were uh, at the toss time, it was still a little bit uh, uh, dicey. And in the end, I think they made the decision quite rightly to do 15 overs. At that time, it was the safest option to do. Uh, but if you look out here right now, uh, Eon, you, are you a weatherman? Do you know, you understand Florida weather? Let me know. Well, really, with the weather here at in the Florida, South Florida area, it's very much unpredictable. You know, you could have sunshine one minute, then it's rain the other. And we have seen that throughout this weekend here. You know, we are coming into the weekend. It was dry looking well, looking like it was going to be a very good weekend for cricket. But yet still, on Thursday, we were not able to have any game right here in the stadium because of rain. And then once we lift the cover... On the Friday, you know, it's been cover on, cover off in between. And for today, I say today is one of the better days. You know, we have uninterrupted cricket all day. So, you know, it would have been good to see a 2020. But as we say, the weather here in Florida, it is very much unpredictable. So doing a 15 over in the finals, I say that was the way to go. And it allows each player to showcase their talent. It's so Najaf Shaw comes in for the last over. Vinod Kandasamy picks up another run. So five balls remaining. It's 94 on the board. Well, 94 is 94 run on the board. Still have five balls to go. I would love to see them get it up to at least 105 or 106. You know, just to give the Cavalier... A little challenge in terms of their batting lineup. We know the depth of it. You know, we know for the Atlanta Fire to make inroad into this batting lineup, they're gotta be on their A plus game in terms of their bowling and their fielding. So this is an attempted run. Okay, so no run there, and it's four more delivery before the end of play. So actually, it's a wide. So. It'll be five balls. One is added to the score. 95 for six. Five balls remaining. Najaf Shah, he's bowling at one for 12, having taken the wicket of uh, the important wicket of Damian E. Banks in the early part. So he's uh, he's done well to to make an early inroad. And he runs in here with 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 an extraordinary record in the U.S. Open. They come back for two. Well run in the end. As both Kanda Swami and Stevens were able to come back quite quickly for two. Every run will count. Yes, definitely. Good run in there between Steven and Kanda Swami. You know, very good run. Um, Shah almost loses his foot in there, you know, with a straight drive back to him, down to the long on boundary. And they were able to get two comfortable run in the end. So that's two more valuable run to the Atlanta Fire. So ball tugged into the onside. Has he found the gap? I think he has. Gone away for four. Off the bat of Stevens. That's a good looking shot. Brings up the 100 here for the Atlanta Fire. 101 for six. Well, watching Steven, I'm wondering if they shouldn't have sent him much earlier because he's taking a swing at it. And he's connecting. So he's 22 from 16. Yeah, this is a good shot. Ball outside the off some. Manipulated into the onside. Found the gap. No man move actually. And it goes bouncing away for four. So very important strike. Oh 
So Najaf Shah comes back and cleans up Antoine Stevens. It's 101 for seven. Good bowling there by Shaw. Good bowling from the very beginning where he got rid of Ibanks and that's where they started to make in roll into this Atlanta Fire team because we know Ibanks is capable of making big totals. He was very productive in the semifinals and you know he was able to get rid of him pretty early and that had a setback for the Atlanta team you know losing Ibanks that early in the inning. So good bowling by him. You know Shaw he's doing pretty well. Two overs. 18 runs so he's bowling pretty well so it's 101 for seven and two deliveries to complete the atlanta inning so we'll see the cavaliers we want to see the lineup that they have because we know they have a factory of batsmen in their lineup you know so anyone could actually come out and assume the opening position because they have a very 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 long batting order uh, yes, Ian, the likes of Kinar Lewis, Chandra Paul Hemraj, Ashar Zaidi, Sean Philly, Monang Patel, Away Zia, Soheb Maksud. You want quick runs, he's going to be a man tonight, Soheb Maksud. Yes, that's a long heave there by the batsman down to the long, long on boundary. Only managed to get one run, that brings them up to 102. And it's one delivery to go. So we're having a game on here, you know, in terms of the Atlanta inning. 102 for seven wickets. One yeah. delivery to go. Atlanta will need will need a good bowling performance. We saw them as a very good, strong feeling team catching. Their catching has been brilliant in the semifinal. Here comes the final ball. Najaf Shah runs into ball to Kandaswamy, Kandaswamy goes out towards the onside. They're running quickly. Could come back for two. The throw comes in from Tehran. And so it's a run out one. 103. That's it for the close of the Atlanta in 103 for, for eight and 15 overs. So the target will be 104 for the Cavaliers. You know, they would be comfortable or quite pleased with the way they have bowled, you know, they have managed to bold and bat themselves into the final, and this is it. So we'll see what they have to deliver in terms of the bat. They deliver with the ball by restricting the Atlanta Fire to 103 for 8. So just to round up here, we see where Babwa was bowled by Tehran for 7. Sharma got 22. Ricardo Powell, he also got 24 there, and Stevens got 22 at the end here, and that brought them up to 103 for 8. And in the bowling department, Tehran, 3 overs, 11 runs conceded, and a wicket. Najav Shah, he got 3 overs in, and 20 runs, 2 wickets, good, good bowling there. And then there goes Stewart. He got three overs, 23 runs, three wickets. He was the trouble for the Atlanta Fire team. You know, he made inroad into that team. And that's the reason why they will be tracing only 103. So thank you guys for watching as we take a break. See you back in a few minutes. All right, welcome back, viewers around the world. We are ready for the second inning, which will conclude this tournament. Um, it's been plenty of past wet days for the past three to four, and I'm glad the weather is sticking around and letting us complete this wonderful tournament. I know there were a lot of pain points, but we're getting closer and this is the start of the second innings now. Cavaliers will start their chase of 104 runs. And in the action from the get-go is Lewis. Uh, goes all the way to the backward square boundary for four runs. Lewis does not waste any time. And he starts off with a boundary, then. Yeah, Daya going down the wrong line. Let's take a look here. Heading down the left side. Would have been called a wide. And Lewis, who has been in good form. Just helping the ball away. That's not a good start here for the Atlanta Fires. 
but Cavaliers will be quite happy with the way things have gone after that one ball. Yes, Dyer was a difference maker uh, against Multan Sultan, and he does not have any time. He needs to bring his A game. They need to get rid of the top order if they want to have any chance. 104 is a small total and 15 overs. Oh, that's not the kind of ball that you want to ball to Kinar Lewis. Why? Why you would want to test the hooking ability of Kinar Lewis, Bilal? Uh, absolutely not, especially what he has done throughout the tournament. Kinar Lewis waiting for this delivery comes his way. Plenty of time to put it away. And it goes all the way behind backward squares so for another four runs. So two boundaries to begin with. Yeah, poor start here from Daya. They were both loose balls and as the top level uh, Bilal, th yeah, those will be punished by, by quality batsmen. Now here we go again. This one uh, pulled into the onside. And uh, protection out in the deep uh, as Lewis continues to, to pile on the runs there. He's quickly up to nine from just three balls. Kenar Lewis this time around another one that was hit straight to the fielder. Otherwise, there would have been another boundary there. And now facing Dyer would be Chandapal. A left-hander facing Dyer now. Yeah, we saw Chan, uh, we saw Chandra Paul Hemraj in the last game got among the runs. Some 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 lovely off drive uh, in the semi-final game. But you get a feeling that um, no no massive pressure on the the batting team here, and we could be seeing some. Uh, some good shots from the uh, from the players, uh, the Somerset Cavaliers batsman. Uh, this one is uh, guided away up to Ricardo Powell. Straight to the fielder. Uh, no run there, but they are off to a great start here. Nine for no loss on four deliveries from the ace bowler of Atlanta Fire. They need to fire up from the get-go. Yeah, we saw Evroy Dyer having a, a, a good semi-final. Uh, this one sprays down the leg side. So not a good start from him. He's given up 10 in the over so far. A couple of fours and now ball angling down the leg side. Called a wide, of course. Yes, the overcast condition not coming into play now. We're late into the afternoon now. Um, Dyer, I hope he's not getting tired. So he just needs to focus and post some few good deliveries and there's one of them beaten outside the off stump channel paul yeah that's a that's a good ball that's uh that's a way you'll probably get it right but this is the second time coming to kimar lewis bilal this is the second time we've seen in matches where uh the ballers uh don't know where they got a memo from that kinar lewis is not a good hooker and We've seen in the other game that they continue bowling short to Kinar Lewis and don't wonder why. Oh, this one is cut away through the backward point region. And that's a classy looking shot uh, from the left-hander. Another boundary is 14 on the board. Chandra Paul joins the party, cuts it away. Look at the replay. Dyer comes in outside the off stump. Plenty of time to put it away through the gap this time around. No chance for any of the fielders. Four runs, 14 for no loss after the first over. Not a great start for Atlanta Fire. Yeah, certainly not a good start. Not a big, not a big score. So every every run will have to be accounted for properly. And with the likes of uh, Chandra Paul Hemraj and Kinar Lewis, you know that the Somerset Cavaliers' opening pair are a solid uh, bunch of players. Kinar Lewis has played first class in the Caribbean. He's had a, a brief taste of CPL. And Chandra Paul Hemraj has played a full season with the Guyana Amazon Warriors. So uh, you're coming up against two top T20 players out in the middle there. Franchise experience coming into play. They understand. They have a well-thought plan how they're going to go about this. And here comes Babwa now. Um, see what he can do with his offspin. And... Kenar Lewis is ready. Oh Ooh. my goodness, he has put it down. So Shazam Babwa. Shazam Babwa. Take a look. 
Oh, oh man. So, cool. Keenar Lewis given the life. Yep. So, uh, that was baller back drive. It was hard coming at Shazan, but at this level, you need to take those catches if you want to win the final game. Would have been a perfect start to his bowling spell. And even better to get the wicket of Keenar Lewis. Keenar Lewis has, uh, has been among the runs. He's, uh, he has struck the ball nicely. He has scored quickly for Somerset Cavaliers. And a big opportunity to get him uh, back in the hut for nine runs. Goes a begging as uh, Shazam Babo yeah. may have missed a big opportunity there for, uh, against Kenar Lewis. It doesn't come handy, uh, especially with the caliber of Kenar Lewis. This time around, angling towards outside the off stump. And Kenar Lewis went for a single. Now, fielding has to change with lefty-righty combination, as you know. Pain points that come with that type of batting. And we got Shazam Bawa that's coming in again. And uh, easy single for Chandra Paul. Chips it away to Vidish Long on. Fielder cuts it away. And Shazam Bawa now will have to bowl to Kenar Lewis. So Somerset Cavaliers, they won in 2017, got into the final in 2018. And Bilal, they're here again. What do you say about a team with that accomplishment? It was a hat trick of finals. Uh, that says a lot about your team. Let's see. Straight to point. Kenar Lewis. So nice length bowled by Shazan Baba. And no time for Kenar Lewis to adjust. Chips at two words, point, no run, dot ball. That's what Atlanta Fire needs. So the weather for now has really holed up. And uh, earlier on, we were we were looking at forecasts that uh, would have uh, showed 80 to 90 to even 100% of rain in the afternoon. So far, this one is driven straight down the ground. And that's four runs off... Uh, of the powerful shoulder of Kenar Lewis. Yes, Kenar Lewis, uh, as we will look at the replay here, uh, straightish ball, wicket, middle stump, at middle stump, Kenar Lewis beat the fielder, widish mid off, thinking that fielder needs to be a little bit fine as he knows that Kenar Lewis is bringing in a straight bat. He's not going cross batted. And he times the ball well. Considering he's uh, he's facing up to an off spinner in Shazam oh, Babwa. So there was a little mix up, uh, but he comes back, no damage done. So a couple of overs in the books, twenty on the board. They're going at ten and over. Take a look here. Okay, go. Going across, uh, Lewis. There it is, and this wonderful fielding that saved certainly saved two runs for sure, and. Ken out, Lewis had to go back. Uh, there was a little bit of mix-up, but at the end, no damage done. 20 after two overs. Required run, is, run rate is 6.5 and current run rate 10, Lenny. So that tells you Cavaliers are in the mood to get it done. Yeah, they've gotten off to a good start. Lewis has been among the runs and he continues to be a, a factor here. So bowling change, Dyer gets a relief and mm, could be a, a Sharma given the ball. We'll wait for that confirmation. That has come. So Sharma comes into the attack here. We'll be bowling to, um, to Chandra Paul Hemraj. Yeah, Ronak Sharma comes into bowl to Chandra Paul. He had plenty of time and launches it over the cover, extra cover. And it went all the way for massive six. So six runs for Chandra Paul. And that will boost his confidence. And that's what you look for when you're out there early on in a final. And it's not at all easy if you are getting good length deliveries. But this time around, he had plenty of time to put it away wherever he wanted. Ronald Sharma, as you look at the replay here, it was a short of length. He waited for it. And launched it over extra cover. And there you go. 26 for no loss after 21. 
Yeah, commanding shot, well manipulated. Typically when a bowler ball short, you tend to pull through the onside, the square part of the boundary. But we saw Chandra Paul on that occasion off the back foot, just punching the ball deliberately over the offside. And realizing we are still in the power play area. And so a good looking shot, 27 on the board. What a start here from Somerset Cavalier. Under no pressure at all with 104 the target. Yeah, no pressure has been exerted so far in terms of bowling. The quality of bowling, Dyer, he was a go-to person um, for Atlanta Fire. But as you can see, not a great start by him. And then Shazan and now Ronick. Uh, a few lose deliveries and 27 for no loss. So Keenar Lewis struck three fours already, Keenar. Ranak Sharma. Oh, this one is clubbed into the onside. Runs away back with square and it goes away for four. So uh, Keenar Lewis is not going to stick around here long enough. He's going to play shots as he continues to bat well. Yeah, so he pulls this one as we look at the uh, the replay here. Ronak Sharma came in. It was sort of full delivery, but plenty of time for um, KNR Lewis to put it away towards backward square leg. There was nobody back there. Four more runs added to the Cavaliers total. So 11 in the over so far. A six and a four in a single. So not a good start here for Sharma. Ronald Sharma is going to come and bowl again to Lewis, Kenar Lewis, and this time around on the backward, backward punch. And there was protection out there, so a single to Kenar Lewis. Yeah, Kenar Lewis makes his appearance in the second final in a row. Having played for Cavaliers last year, opened the batting also, got among the runs. Uh, got them off to a good start, and then... We've been saying about Navin Stewart, the man with the golden arm. <laughs> he came around and uh, was able to snap up a couple of wickets. And uh, next thing you know, Cavaliers are fighting to hold on towards the end. So as we saw in the previous game, uh, this gentleman wearing a uh, red hoodie or jacket, as you can see, it it's definitely sounds like or seems like that you have an umpire. Uh, there were three umpires out there in the field, but that's not the case, right? Well, that's Ricardo Powell choosing to go with a red uh, sweat jacket. Oh, this one is launched into the deep, over the offside. And it's gone all the way. That's a good-looking shot from uh, Chandra Paul Hemraj. Another six here at the Broward County Park. Yeah, so the last ball of the field restrictions taking full advantage. Rick and Ronald Sharma being mistreated here in the third over, 38 for no loss. And then here we go. Uh, Chandra Parle playing his role very well, waiting for the loose deliveries, putting them away. Big Tom, this was a massive six. He had hit one early on within the same over. So after three, 38 for no loss. Yeah, this uh, this chase has become a very easy one for Cavaliers. They've gone quickly up to 38. So they're going at 12.6 and over. 12.7 actually. Yeah, they're treating this as if the required run, eight, run rate is 15 plus. They're playing just like that. But bowlers are not helping the cause as well. That, that is the Cavaliers. The Atlanta Fires cause that is for the bowlers. But um, at this point... Total in command, Cavaliers 38 for no loss. Yeah, one blemish. Uh, Shazam Babwa had, a, a, had an opportunity to get Kimar, uh, Kinar Lewis back in the hut, but uh, chance not accepted. And on the other hand, we have seen Chandra Paul Hemra just come to the party. And so Kinar Lewis now realizing that Shazam Babwa is just targeting or angling the ball towards the outside of the off stump, so he's already settled in, got a predetermined mindset, punches it, no run. Yeah, these uh, these off spinners and leg spinners, as we have seen Bilal in, in recent time, they become darter of the ball. Gone are the days in which you, you probably use a little bit of flight and uh, 
and give the ball a little bit of ear for deception. But now, as you can see, um, Shazam Baba is darting the ball in. And he's coming around the wicket. So he wants to create a bit of angle here towards the batsman, especially the right-hander. And so far, Keenar Lewis on 19 to no avail. It's not a big score. So as a batsman going out in the middle, you're not under any scoreboard pressure. And when you get a start at 38 without loss in, in, in the fourth over, it even becomes easier here to, to move on. Yeah, so they're relaxed, focused, confidence level is high, and that's what you need in a, in a grand finale. Missed out on a full toss here, Kenar Lewis. I probably didn't expect that from Shazam Baba, but he knows that he missed out, but... No damage done because they're at 38 for no loss. Far ahead of the required run rate. Yeah, certainly the game might have played a, a little bit different. Oh, nicely placed here by Kinar Lewis. He picks up another boundary. And Kinar Lewis, five fours so far in 23. So you see the talent there. The first time he missed out. And Shazam Baba thought the same thing will happen. But this time around, he was ready. To put it away, not only to put it away, but to put it away through the gap. You know, dissected three different fielders, as you see. One from inside the circle and two outside for another four. So, Kinar Lewis just uh, proving uh, Bilal that not only he can strike the ball for, for big shots, he does have some finesse. And that one a full toss previous to this ball. This one was quicker one for Shazam Baba. Change of pace. And he comes in again to ball the last delivery for this over. And so it's driven to straight to Whitish Midoff for no run. So after four overs, 42 for no loss, Lenny. Yeah, good, uh, a good showing this year again from Somerset Cavaliers. Team owner Aslam Khan. And the coach, of course, uh, being Mr. Brown. A lot of bench strength. The likes of Gajan and Singh, who's not... Uh, well, I think he was listed as a super sub. Uh, a method that has been used in this tournament. As we see Chris Lewis, uh, Chris Powell actually, given, uh, given the ball here as uh, he marks it run. So Chris Powell will come into to bowl to Chandra Paul Hemraj. Both batsmen have... Uh, have played some lovely shots. Uh, Chandra Paul Hemraj in particular has gone twice over the ropes. And one across the rope. And Kinar Lewis has gone five times across the ropes in 23. So we've seen a, a flurry of boundaries uh, from the Somerset Cavaliers player. Um, indeed, that's what's been happening. And now they will have to look at the game plan because field is spread out. You have um, at least... Uh, as if I see deep mid wicket, so backward square leg is in play, and they still want to attack. So there's plenty of fields inside the circle, and here comes Chris Powell, who bowled the last over of the first last semifinal game. Let's see up in the air, and let's see if there's a catch, and it was Powell. dropped. Ricardo Powell is the man who dropped the catch. And this is a second drop in this inning. As you can see, first one was a hard one, but this one should have been taken at this level. And this, we don't know how much damage this will do. But in the final, you want to take those type of catches. Ricardo, he was under the ball in the last minute, and that's where it dropped. He did not keep his eye on the ball until the last minute, and it cost him a drop catch. Yeah, that's the difference from the semi-final. Everything that went up in the semi-final were taken, and they were difficult chance. And today we've seen a couple of drop chances, one from Ricardo Paul just now, and then one from uh, Shazam Babwa. Yeah, both openers have been dropped once, and there comes Chris Powell. Uh, some sort of distraction. He will have to start over. He, the fielder did not switch. He realized in the last minute, so we get a gully point, short cover. Whitish mid off and Chris Powell runs in to bowl to Kenar Lewis and was on the leg stump. This final leg in place, so only a single and chance of an overthrow, but there was a backup. Here comes 
Chris Powell, as you can see, on to the leg stump. And Ken R. Lewis was not focused. Otherwise, this should have been put away towards the deep final leg boundary. Uh, Chandra Paul will be facing Chris Powell. Chris Powell runs in. Uh, I see spot on on the leg stump. Did not give any opportunity to Chandra Paul to put the ball away. Another, let's see, there was a dot ball here now. Chris Powell on target on leg stump. And Chandra Paul going across, missed it completely. Yeah, Bilal, you never know how this game uh, would have gone on had those uh, two catches been accepted. Uh, one uh, one by Powell and uh, one by uh, Shazam Babwa. Yeah, speaking of drop catches, there was another chance here. Uh, Chris Powell yeah, put his hand onto it. Again, a difficult one. Baller back drive. And that was a difficult one. So a lot happening out there for... Uh, Land of fire. Let's look at the replay again. Chris Powell comes in and ball back drive. Yeah, even e even a uh, even the defense of 103. Here we go. That's right. Uh, yeah, another one. So three three catches put down. Quite a yeah. stark difference. Kinar Lewis has launched this one in the outer area. And has gone for another massively struck six off the bat of Kinar Lewis. And that brings up the 50 here for Somerset Cavaliers. They're on cruise control at the moment. 51 for no loss and 4.5 overs. Kinar Lewis is in a mood to finish this early. He doesn't want to wait or hang around until the 15th over. Another six that was launched all the way to the deep mid-wicket area, and then the fielder had to go all, all the way outside of the ground to p get the ball back in. A massive six by Kenar Lewis. And we, as we spoke about this, when you're chasing a nominal target, that's what we will call it in a 15-over game, you have, to, you have to take those catches. Catches win matches, that's one thing. You have to take wickets early on uh, to put the pressure on the middle order and lower middle order, and that's the, the, the key to success and that's not happening for Atlanta Fire. Oh, as we see, it's a massive one again. It disappeared. Oh, so another six by Kenar Lewis. 57 for no loss after five or six. So they have lost the script. Chris Powell went for plenty in this over. So Atlanta Fire, they have to regroup. They have to get some quick wickets. If they want to stay in this game, otherwise, cannot Lewis want to have early dinner? All right, so Bilal. Bilal will take uh, his leave with the news. 57 without loss, a commanding uh, position uh, Somerset Cavaliers find themselves in. And they've worked hard in the tournament here as we welcome Eon, Eon Thomas back. And, and Thomas, the way things are looking here, uh, it's Somerset Cavaliers all the way. Well, Lenny Archibar, I must say that the Somerset Cavalier is doing everything that the Atlanta Fire fails to do. They came out with the intention to win. They came out with the intention that their opening batsman was going to get them some runs. And we did not see that with the Atlanta Fires. You know, they came out, they're going to find the boundary and they're going to find it pretty early. And they're doing just that. With Kenar Lewis, he's taking it to the bowler. Also, Shonda Paul is taking it to the bowler. Both batsmen are positive, they're confident, and they're just crying out the game plan, what they have been doing all through this tournament. So I just want to say that it's excellent cricket that's been displayed here by the Cavaliers. They're batting extremely well. They have bowled, I'm saying, they have bowled like the way you'd want your bowlers to bowl in a finals. They had showed up today and they have been performing to the top and the best of their ability. I just want to give it up to the Cavaliers. So Ricardo Powell comes into the attack, 47 to win from 60 balls. Chanda Paul is on 20. Kinar Lewis on 35. So big opening stand here for the Cavaliers boys.
So Ian, at the, at the start of the tournament, 28 teams made it to the starting line. Yes, this year the tournament have grown, grown a lot. I know there was like over 80 teams that wanted to be a part of this competition. But based on the fact that we only had four days, you know, in the drafting, we only selected 28 of those teams. And it's 28 very, very good teams. As you can see, the quality of the players, every single team had at least six top players in their lineup and also some locals. But everybody have displayed some wonderful cricket over the four days here at the Broad Stadium. So 28 teams, is it has come down to the final two. And the way it's looking, Cavaliers could be the the last team standing. We see Houston Stars falling into the semi-final. They fell away at the semi-final stage. And we also saw Multan Sultan uh, losing to the Atlanta Fire. So we're down to the last two. And, and the way it's looking here, doesn't look too good for the, for the Atlanta team. As Kinar Lewis and Chandra Paul Hemraj has given... Somerset Cavaliers a solid start. They've survived a couple of chances, uh, but uh, that aside, they've batted they've batted uh, impressively well. And the way it looks here is that 103, 104 may not hold up here for the Atlanta Fire team. Well, we have been saying that all along that you know in this competition here, we realize that anything that's under 120 was not gonna hold up even in a 10-over version. And for the 15-over for this finals here, to be scoring 103 in 15-overs, we knew that was not going to be a match for this Cavalier team, not with the batting lineup that they have. And you can see it there. It's still the two openers that's still at the crease, Shanda Paul, Hemraj, and Kenar Lewis. They are there, and they're just playing their game. Uh, yes, Ian, when you consider... When you consider coming next, could be Marshall. And then we've, we've got Awais Zia, a player who has played at the top level in Pakistan. We saw, we saw Soheb Maksud, who is as, uh, as brutal as Kinar Lewis. And he's down the order. And then we haven't seen much, much of Sean Finley because the top order has really taken them to where they are today. And so a long list of uh, top players still to come. Ashar Zaidi is up there. Uh, Navin Short can bat, R uh, Rusty Tehran can give the ball a tap. And so a long list of uh, batsmen we haven't seen showcase showcasing their talent uh, because of the top work done by Kinar Lewis and the likes of Hemraj and company. Definitely, you know, this team, this lineup, it is stuck with a lot of batsmen. And just to see that we have top quality batsmen who have not even been able to showcase their talent because they are part of this team but guess what it's gonna be a winning team and it would work the while to be out there on the field with these players but i am telling you they have a full lineup of batsmen so that's another four there and we realize that this is like easy picking for these two batsmen here shanda paul hemraj is taking it to the bowler at one end and then you have Kenar Lewis at the other end he's 36 from 21 Shanda Paul 26 from 16 these two batsmen are just going they're on fire I think they take the fire away from Atlanta so it's just Atlanta out there now but the fire is gone so Cavaliers they won in 2017 they were in the final in 2018 and and you're watching what has happened here in 2019 right before your very eyes with the news that Chandra Paul Hemraj and uh, Kinar Lewis is, uh, has brought this game well within range of a Somerset victory. Oh, cut away. Chance and put down. So another chan chance goes a begging here, Ian, as we watch on the replay board. This one relatively should have been taken, but uh, not accepted. Yes, so in that replay there, we saw where Shanda Paul, he did not get fully over the ball. So, you know, it came off of the upper half of the bat. It should have been an easy catch, but we realized that this Atlanta Fire, they've been spilling most of their catches. If they had taken all those catches that they had gotten in this match, it would be a different game. We'd probably have at least four wickets down, but they're not taking the catches. And 
this ball is running down to us they'll get a single there so we learned about it catches win matches and they did that in the semi-finals but it's like it's a different team out here for the finals they're not catching we see catch being going down by some of even the better catchers so 38 to win from 50 balls bottom left of your screen and 38 runs will give Somerset Cavaliers their second victory in three years. And that's a big accomplishment as a, as a franchise unit, uh, Ion. Yes, definitely. That is hike all the way up backwards square. Six more runs to Shandapal. He is batting like a king this afternoon. Yeah, short ball. That's a, that's a poor delivery there from, uh, from Sharma. And you look at that, look, off the back foot, short. And pulled into the onside. Distance shot, and it goes away for six. So 72 without loss. Yes, this total here has not posed a challenge to the sum of set Cavaliers. They're taking it easy. It's like taking, as I say, candy from a baby. You know, they're, it's easy picking. They're finding the boundary. They're dislodging the bad ball. Even the good ball is going away. So great cricket here by the Somerset Cavalier and great batting by these two batsmen that's at the wicket, Shanda Paul Hamraj and Kenar Lewis. They are taking their team closer and closer to victory, even though they have a few chances. But guess what? They are not afraid to play their shots. And that what was lacking in the Atlanta Fire team. They weren't going for their shots. They weren't finding the boundary. They weren't able to penetrate the infield. And as a result, I think they were short at least 50 runs on the day. So, so Ricardo Powell will continue. His first of all went for three. But they're simply under the gun here to, to defend 31 from 48 balls with all the wickets in hand. So Chandra Paul Hemraj, we see him in his bright green pads and uh, I'm sure would have gotten down with the Guyana Amazon Warrior kit, uh, Eon. So not a single here for Cavaliers. So they move for the inch closer to to perhaps a second victory in the U.S. Open in three years. Yes, this um, Cavalier team is loaded with players who have played at a professional level, as you can see. You know, a lot of big names here. Some of them haven't even been showcased with the bat or the ball. And that's a marvelous shot through the cover, into the boundary, four runs. Yeah, Ken R. Lewis has a flight to catch, I can tell you that. So he wants to get this over with early. Uh, because, you know, um, if Cavaliers win, which uh, they're really on course, I'm pretty sure the post-match uh, celebrations will be a little drawn out. Uh, look at that, finding the gap through the offside, no trouble at all. And Ken R. Lewis goes, goes into the 40s, 41 of 23 balls. Look at that shot, nobody moved. The only person move was just to go fetch the ball, but not to even try to get around. That shot was full of power, and the placement was perfect. Good knock there by Kenar Lewis. And he's uh, going, and he's going with this, and it's going, it's going, it's gone. Six more runs to Kenar Lewis, and put him closer to 50, 47 of 24. Big hit there by Kenar Lewis. Hitting Ricardo Powell over the boundary, six runs. Well executed shot there by Kenar Lewis. He's wasting no time here. It's like game over. So good batting, good batting here by Kenar Lewis. Bilar, welcome to the box. All right, thank you, Ian. And uh, seemed like we're getting closer to the end of the tournament. Yes, you know. These two players, they're playing positive. They're getting the singles. They're turning over the strike. Both of them going great guns. Kenar Lewis, 47 from 25. Shanda Paul, Hemraj, 35 from 22. You could not have asked for a better opening stand between these two batsmen. 
And that too in a grand finale, you know, the pressure of a final, but seem like they're unaware of that, that this is a final game. They just came about their game plan. Um, they took the, the, the game away from Atlanta Fire from the get-go in the first five overs. They scored their 50, the team 50 that is. And now you can see KNR Lewis at 49, needs one more to score his 50 in the final and what else you can ask from a great player like him? Definitely. Kenar Lewis had shown his class here tonight. Behind the wicket and at the wicket in terms of his batting. You know, it is great batting here. You know, great batting being showcased by him. He has not been afraid to play his shot. And you have seen him innings after innings, the way he go out there and approach it. He is really a great batsman and one to watch. Redwan Palash um, is in to replace the bowling. And Redwan Palash, let's see what he has to bring. The first ball was a dot ball. And Chandapal will be facing Redwan again. And this one is played out into the offside, and they'll go through for an easy single. So they're just turning over the strike if they're not able to get the boundaries. Yeah, they're waiting for the bad ball. They're putting away the bad ball. That's how you want to plan your inning, especially when there's no pressure for required run rate at this moment. It's 2.5. So 2.5 is required run rate, and current run rate for the Cavaliers is 10.4. You can see the difference, and that tells you the story. Yes, it's it's great approach here by the Somerset Cavalier from ball one they actually had it all calculated and that's the beauty about this team it seems like they actually have a game plan for each and every game for every opponent that they go in a they have a plan and they've been executing it perfectly yeah can our lois wanted to launch this over to the mid wicket area to score his 50 missed it and he just want to be careful and now he's one more for his 50. Rizwan Palash, and this time around, he's able to pull it through towards deep mid-wicket, and that brings well-deserved 50 for Kenar Lewis. Yes, well-deserved 50 for Kenar Lewis. Well played to him, you know. I know his team members will be happy with him, his performance here today. He's really a force to reckon with, with this Somerset Cavaliers, to have him in your lineup at the top of the innings, what an inning is it, it is from Kenar Lewis. Good 50. So Hemrod Chanderpaul trying to bring a reverse sweep, and it goes all the way close to the boundary, I believe. It's uh, four runs, just shy of the boundary. What a shot. So it, it was a great shot. Reverse sweep. Baller never... Expected that, but it went all the way closer to the boundary. Yes, with, with your team doing this well, you're able to invent or create any possible stroke. And the way these two batsmen are going, they're seeing the ball very big. And they're able to put it basically anywhere they want to put it at this stage, you know. So great shot there by Shanda Paul Hemorrhage. You know, he turned and he hit the ball. Four runs. Good batting from the two. Yeah, so... Good thing about Cavaliers is that they still have a few more stars in the hat. And this time around, Hemrod Chanderpaul launches him over deep long on. Some massive six. Here's the side screen. A big six of the bat of Hemrod Chanderpaul. Bilad, I believe that Chanderpaul Hemrod, he's looking at it that he can get his 52. And he goes up to 46 of 26 balls. So... He could actually end up with a half century because they still need a few runs and he only needs four to his tally to make him yeah, 50. Par partnership on 98. Uh, how many times you see that in a 15-over game, you see both openers putting up a partnership of 98 and you know it will always be 100 before you know it. It's a great show. Yes, good batting by the two. And I would love to see Shanda Paul Hemrods get a 50 here today. It would be well deserved. Good batting by him. Also with the ball when he was bowling. Wonderful player. 
and positive cricket being displayed here. I see Ken R. Lewis, what type of plan he's got. He wants to finish up the game. Yes. Or he wants to give an opportunity to John Paul for him to score his 52. So we see that it was a loosener, but still he tapped it for a single only. What a good relationship between these players out there. They have a very good understanding of each other. As I tell you, they know what is required of them. They're calculating their score, and they know that Hemrod Chandapal is able to get a 50, and you see Kenar Lewis, he got a loosener, but he just dabbed it and take a single so as to give his batting partner a chance to go at his 50. So good batting by the two, good understanding. Yep, so... Shazan Babwa this time around, uh, adjusting his lunch, uh, length, that is. And uh, we got Hemrod Chandrapal. He will have to wait. Yes, he will get his opportunity. He's waiting for the loose ball so he can hit either winning runs or hit a boundary to get to his 50. <laughs> Shazan Babwa is trying to intimidate. He's trying to tease him, and now Emrod Chandrapal cannot wait to hit the winning runs, and Shazan Bhava, some lighter moment there, and this time around he hits it towards deep mid-wicket area, and then gets a single that brings up 100 for Cavaliers. So Ian, what do you think? It was a quick, fiery century partnership. That is good batting being displayed by these two here. You know, as I said, they really have an understanding of each other and they're doing exactly what a captain would require from the opening pier. You know, they took it to the bowlers. They actually take away the game from the Atlanta fire pretty early on. You see the shots that they were playing. They were executing well. They were getting the boundaries. And Kenar Lewis just barely tripped this. Just want to give him the single again so that he could actually complete and get a 50 so he is on 47 just need a boundary and he would be 50 runs that is well deserved so we're getting closer a few more moments before we conclude this wonderful tournament um, everybody enjoyed it our audience spectators around the world and there's a white ball and I believe this may well end the game now because there were three required. It was a white ball, and oh, Kenny step. refuses the second run. So there's one more needed now. One one run needed. To, um, score. Let, let's see uh, the game that Kenner Lewis is going to play here. You know, I think he still want to give his partner a chance to have the 50. Because they could have finished the game just about now, but... They refuse to take that single. So I think he's just going to stop these two balls and allow him to get the 50. But then it's up to the bowler. Remember the other game. <laughs> <laughs> yep, just like Shazan Baba, this uh, bowler, a white ball, just the last one. So he has to bowl that again. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> Ken Art Lewis not giving him uh, anything. It, he just wants uh, John DePaul to score his. 50. Three runs needed for Chandra Paul, while one more needed to seal the deal for Cavaliers. We're loving the game, and he's into bowl, and he's going to stop it. Definitely. We knew that was coming. So, what a good batting from the two here. Chandra Paul, he's going to go over to Kenar, and he's going to thank him for allowing him again another chance to make the 50. So, if Shanda Paul Hemorrhage don't make this 50. We have nothing to say about the batting of Kenar Lewis. Yeah, I, I agree. So it's been a wonderful show so far. You know, century partnership and a grand finale. Um, and that too, in tough conditions, you know, everybody knows what Atlanta Fire can bring in. But they did not fire up in bowling and fielding. And that really cost them big time. So there was what? a... Loosener and it was a winning shot like you want. It went all the way for six runs. He scores the winning runs. He hits the six. He also seals the deal for Cavaliers. They win the championship. Well deserved victory. And 
like we were talking about Lin to Lenny that you know this was third final in a row, three years in a row, hat trick of finals, and now they win two out of three. There goes the championship. Well played, well played by the Cavaliers. Well played by these two batsmen, and I really love the sportsmanship. The sportsmanship of Kenar Lewis allowing his partner to also get his 50. So both of them end this game 1 and 52 to Kenar Lewis and Shanda Paul 53. He finishes the game and great win here by the Somerset Cavaliers. What a day we have here. It's a, absolutely great talent all around. We had 28 teams to start with and look at the scorecard. Not much to say. Kenneth Lewis, 52 of 32, and then at the end, Henry Chunderpaul, 53 of 29. Both of them backed each other, and in the bowling, Dyer, none for 14. And the pick of the bowler that we will see is Ricardo Powell, none for 16 in two overs, but nothing else to mention here. Shazan Bob also none for 15 in three overs. Uh, this game ended, and you can see on the screen now, uh, Soheb Maksud, he didn't get a chance to bat. He's one of the PSL players, uh, part of the, the PSL. And he also joined this tournament and uh, displayed uh, some good batting um, yesterday as well. Uh, but that tells you what type of talent was sitting in the hut for Cavaliers and they were able to accomplish this big time. So we're now at the end of the U.S. Open. What a weekend it has been what a weekend of cricket and we just want to say to our viewers out there we thank you guys so much who have been watching on mac tv live or facebook fans who have been watching and sharing you know we couldn't be more happier to have brought to you this type of cricket and a wonderful cricket and we're just so happy that we're able to entertain you because definitely right here in the commentary box we were entertained by some great cricket on the field and even off the field some great cricket was displayed and we just got to give it up to the Somerset Cavaliers the 11th US Open champions is the Somerset Cavaliers great win by the team well-deserved, they outclassed their opponents in each and every single de department. So uh, kudos, congratulations to Somerset Cavaliers. Congratulations to the, the tournament committee for such a great tournament. They had to make adjustments throughout the four days because of the weather forecast. It wasn't easy. They had to change the schedule. They had to notify teams and then the ground staff. So we have to thank them big time. It was back and forth for them for the past two days. They had to bring the covers back on, dry everything up, get it ready for teams. Um, kudos to them. They have done a wonderful job here. And I believe all along it was teamwork. And um, it was uh, great moments. Uh, we have seen great performances by youngsters. The U.S. Open. Coming up now. Right. So we have the next game in now. That is the semifinal for the youth under 17 uh, tournament between the Kumar Rampad Cricket Academy, which is under 17, versus an Ontario Greens under 17. So that's the next game that we will be broadcasting in a few minutes. Uh, we're getting ready. Uh, but back to this now, Ian. Uh, wonderful job by the ground staff. Yes, it was an all-round and a complete game of cricket that was supported from all angles, from the ground staff, from the media, from the organizer, the management team, the players, the supporters. I just want to say it was just an amazing tournament that was run properly, perfectly well run. and. No, you know, we're just going to turn you guys over to even the youth cricket because now we're going to bring into the stadium the youth cricket and we're going to have the semifinals and the finals right here. So if you want to still tune in, we have the youth cricket coming up. Thank you all for watching this live on Mac TV and also for our social media fans. We thank you for watching and sharing. And it's just cricket, lovely cricket. Thank you. Yes, so we'll take a break and come right back once the game starts for the under-17 semifinal.